So now in this video we're going to look at another voltage. This time we're going to use this uh, circuit here. What it is, it's a transistor. We got a 1 kilo ohm resistor protecting that LED there. If I close the switch, we have, I have an 8 volt power supply, a connection through there. And uh, so a little bit of current through base to emitter lets the transistor conduct fully. If I let go of the switch though, you can see that the LED stays on for a while and it is fading down. It is getting dimmer. That's because we instantly charge the capacitor when we press the button. This is a 100 microfarad capacitor and this is a 10 kilo ohm resistor right there. So it charged instantly when I pressed that button and now the capacitor is discharging through the resistor, the base to emitter like that. So now I got the oscilloscope there, the uh, black alligator clip to this blue jumper to the negative rail. The negative side of the 100 microfarad capacitor, the red alligator clip I clipped to a red jumper. I'm going to plug that to where the capacitor, the switch, and the resistor meet right there. And you can see we already have a tiny bit of voltage. That's the voltage needed to get the uh, base to emitter to conduct. It's going to be the same voltage at this time because there's uh, hardly any current flowing at all. Maybe none by this point. So in any case, now when I hit the button, the uh, power supply, by the way, is set to 8 volts right there. And I had to up the uh, current. Usually I keep it about 20 milliamps to make sure I don't pass too much current through an LED. But uh, the capacitor needs a burst of current to start charging. But while I'm holding the button, you can see that we got about 5 milliamps of current going right there. Now we're going to focus on the waveform. You can see that the uh, waveform dropped from 8 volts really, really suddenly. But the LED is still extremely bright. It's when we get somewhere around 0.7 volts here that the LED starts really to dim pretty quickly. And uh, so there's just a small uh, voltage range where the uh, transistor is not saturated not conducting fully as far as this LED is concerned. If we needed more uh, current, uh, something may lose power a little quicker. But it, since it's an LED, it might uh, last a little bit longer uh, fully on. So now we'll come back. Again, I'll hit the button. You can see it's five milliamps of current for the most part. I let go. You can see that wave going down. The current's holding steady until we get, again, to that point. And it dropped rapidly. So we're much less than a fifth of the current that we had uh, originally, but uh, it's still enough for the green LED to light up a, a little bit. So now I was mostly interested for this video in the voltage across the capacitor right there, but it's good to look at that in comparison to the base of the transistor. So that's where this wire of the uh, resistor connects right there. As I showed before, it's about the same voltage when the capacitor is uh, discharged because it's not letting current through. If I press the button, there you can see it jumped up to about 1 volt, a little less than 1 volt, maybe 0.8 uh, or 9. That's because a fair amount of current is going through it. And uh, current's going down, it's lowering a little bit. We'll kind of zoom in and take a little bit, a uh, little better look at there. You can see it slowly easing down, but it's still sticking around that 0.7 volts. The more current that's going through it, the more voltage that builds up across it. But once it gets about 0.7 uh, volts, it's really not uh, having much current going through it anymore. And it's going to level off somewhere, probably about 0.6 volts right there. So you can see we don't have the uh, massive voltage change from base to emitter. That's because it's a diode, kind of like how the LED holds a uh, pretty close to specific amount of voltage across it. It does go up slightly with more current and down slightly with uh, less current, but there's usually a, a voltage buildup across it of a specific amount as long as it is being supplied at least that much voltage. So now of course we can change how long everything takes. So this is a 100 microfarad capacitor. Hopefully you can see that. And uh, we're going to replace it for a 1000 microfarad capacitor. You can definitely see that one. So again, this is polarized. You can put it in the uh, right, the negative side. You should put to the negative rail. Makes things really easy. And then we got the uh, positive up where that jumper is. So again, I'm going to hold the uh, button. And 
we had a, a burst of current it charged and now when I release it now you can see that the discharge is taken a whole lot longer and uh, so I'm going to assume probably somewhere around 10 times as long. But uh, there you can see the curve is slowly, slowly going down. So it's still saturated. There you can see we got 5 milliamps of current. Uh, the capacitor is only adding the amount of time because it's a larger value capacitor. We could use a larger value resistor too. That would buy some more time as long as enough current's going to saturate the transistor. And a smaller resistor would speed things up depending on the capacitor that you have. So let's see, yeah, it's still 5 milliamps of current. We added a lot of time there. But it's going to fade off at uh, some point. Okay, it just started fading off right there. You can see 3, 2, not as quick as before. But in uh, any case, you get the uh, general idea, I'm sure. So hopefully you enjoyed the video. Make sure you check out one of the other videos that I'm posting. Click like, subscribe, the bell, all that. Donate to Patreon if you can. I have links down in the description. Any of the links that I put, if you click them and check out what's there, helps out a lot. So, thanks for doing that. I will see you in the next video.